how is it that psilocybin in particular and high dose psilocybin and the ego dissolution that people talk about mm -hmm. on psilocybin, how do you think that um, lines up with some of the experiences that um, you've been describing for a adequate meditation practice? Yeah, yeah. Because that's something that I did not experience on MDMA. In fact, if anything, I, I experienced for the first time what um, really feeling like a, a isolated container uh, was and the difference between and how empathy and being bounded, having, in other words, good boundaries and empathy could be symbiotic. I experienced mm -hmm. that for the first time there. And I, I do think that there is learning inside of these states that translates into everyday life when one is not on these states. And the last thing I'll say is, no, I don't feel the, um, the impulse to go and do tw 20 more MDMA sessions. I think right. that the three as part of this study um, were uh, very effective for me. And, you know, as they say, if you hear the calling again, yeah. you, you might do it. But I'm very curious about psilocybin in particular and right. this notion of ego dissolution because we've been talking about the self. Well, so so there are different ways in which the sense of self can be eroded or expanded. Or I mean, there's lots of experiences that can still have a kind of center to them, but be you know very novel and and transformational. Um, and one can reify those as a kind of goal state, right? And it's sort of the, it, there's a concept in, in Buddhism that I think is useful. It doesn't translate well to English or it can, it can set up um, kind of uh, false associations in English that, that are unfortunate. But so there's a concept of emptiness in Buddhism, which um, sounds again, kind of gray and dispiriting in English, but it's, um, uh, what it the what its its sort of cognate terms are are things like unconditioned, unconstrained, open, centerless, right? So it's it's um, there's a uh, and and that is so when I'm talking about non-duality, when I'm talking about the, the loss of a sense of subject, and then what's left in Buddhism, they, they would often describe what's left as emptiness, but it, emptiness is not. A something. It's not a. It, it's and it's importantly, it's not the same thing as unity, right? So it's not. It's not a oneness, right? Because it's. It's. What's what's left when the, when the center drops out of experience. It's not like you are suddenly merged with the cup, right? It's. But now, granted, that I, you know, the, and this is where psilocybin and other psychedelics can give a false impression of, of, I think, what the goal is, you can have kind uh, seeming merging experience, you can have unity experiences on psychedelics, which can be quite powerful, especially with nature, with other people and with nature, where you can just feel like, you know, the, the, the energy of your body becomes, uh, incredibly vivid and powerful. It's just like, like you're just, you know, everything is just, you know, buzzing with, you know, life energy. And then when you, you know, touch another person's hand or you touch a tree, there can be this sort of continuity of energy, which can be this overwhelming experience of, uh, and again, this is a, 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 just a 20 megaton change in the contents of consciousness, right? This is like, this is a non-ordinary state of consciousness, but like, I mean, this is, this is a, give some indication of what, of how this happens. When I, back in the day when I was uh, in my 20s and I was experimenting with, with uh, this was LSD, but um, some friends and I decided, we had this brilliant idea, we would, we would camp above Muir Woods and then take some, uh, some LSD at dawn and then walk down, you know, like a mile, I think, from the campsite into the, into the actual proper grove of trees and, and you know, commune with the giant redwoods the tallest trees on earth. Um, and so we dropped the acid at dawn and we start walking, but the acid came on, you know, almost immediately. And we didn't get, I mean, we got nowhere near the woods and we got stopped by a tree that was just like a, an ordinary, you know, 20 foot oak tree, like the most boring tree in the world. And that tree absorbed like the next, next six hours of, our, of our conscious attention because it was just, you know, it was the tree of life. I mean, it was just, it could, there could be no better tree. Um, so these are, we're talking about non-ordinary states of con consciousness wherein a, a merging with life and with with the world is possible, and that is a. So I'm not I'm not saying that kind of experience isn't possible, but there's a sort of 
uh, expanded self reification. It, it, is, it is a kind of ego dissolution, but there's a, there's a kind of egoity that sort of goes along for the ride as well, or can go along for the ride. And the real insight into emptiness, the real sort of centerless, you know, center of the bullseye, is a recognition that, that in some ways equalizes all experiences. I mean, again, it's, it's, it's just as available now in the, this ordinary, you know, podcasting experience as it is when you're merging hands-on with a, an oak tree and, you know, on, you know, 400 micrograms of acid and this is, you know, the, this is the whole universe. Um, and so it's, it's, it's the, it's the equality of those two experiences that, that, that this concept of emptiness captures, which a com concept of oneness doesn't quite capture, because oneness is really this, this peak experience of being dragged out of your, you know, your somethingness into a much bigger somethingness, right? Emptiness is just no center, right? And then everything is in its own place, right? There's still sights and sounds and sensations and thoughts and feelings, but there's just, there's no, there's no center and there's no clinging to anything. There's no clinging to identity. There's no clinging to the good stuff. There's no, there's no resistance to the bad stuff. There's no, this is so pleasant and unpleasant get sort of strangely equalized. And there's this very, it's, it's, it's very expansive and it, and most importantly, it doesn't block anything. So yeah, if, if for whatever reason, if your nervous system is set up to have the, oh my God, I'm now merging with the tree experience, that's a, that's possible from the state of no center, right? And then, and and on my you know that my recent now not so recent three years ago it was right before COVID, uh, but my last you know big psychedelic experience. You know there was I was very much experiencing that, whereas you know insofar as I you know you know at the peak there was no me to remember any of any of this stuff, but you know insofar as I could experiment with, is this really different from anything else? You know, it, there is a kind of equalizing to the, the emptiness recognition, even in the, in the presence of a completely transformed neurophysiology. And, and so that's, um, again, there's, there's a point of contact. I mean, the, the, the real point of contact between psychedelics and meditation for me is but for my experiences on psychedelics, there's, I don't think there's just no way I would have had the free attention to be interested in, in, the, in the project at all. Um, and there are other aspects to the project. It's not just having this insight into selflessness. It's, it's all of the ethical ramifications of that. It's just like, what kind of person do you want to be? What are your values? What's, what, what is a good life altogether when you are talking about relationships and, you know, political engagement and the changes you can make in the world or not make, or I mean, it's, it's just, you know, what kind of person do you want to be? There's, there's, there's a much larger consideration. And I mean, as you discovered, you know, an experience on MDMA can uh, really you know, both, both expand your model of what is possible and what is desirable, what is normative. I mean, just what kind of, you know, what kind of self do you want to be in the world? Uh, and uh, it can also help you cut through things that are inhibiting you, you're actualizing any of those possibilities in ordinary waking consciousness.